What is good? We're back. We got the full tripod all in house, ready to roll. Ready to roll. Fresh crack to start us off. We got moves to make. We're we're rolling into the part of the season. We're going through week 11 right now where there's probably some people starting to tune out. Uh, you know, I'm either getting ready to go in or I just I just need a break. And then there's some people who have gotten excited because they're like, ah, I'm kind of in it. Right. Uh, so, you know, we're not going to go too crazy on the moves to make just yet. We are going to brush on the the rookie quarterbacks because I did, did want to kind of just check in on those guys, see where they're at. Maybe really we just want to kind of check the value of Caleb Williams. Uh, but we, we, we did want to, you know, then spend a decent amount of the show just kind of talking about, you know, how it's very, we feel necessary to, to continue to harp on not playing dynasty like redraft and, and, you know, just to, to take the ups and downs as they come and not be so reactionary, which I mean, we've done a ton on this show, but we want to reiterate that again and, and, and talk about that some more on the back half of things. Yeah. I like it. Like you said, it's. Halfway through the season, you got people that are either championship hunting or, right. uh, you know, throw their hands up. Hey, I'm two and eight. My team is, you know, season's done. I'm toast. And they may just be, you know, closing their phone for a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you got the the true gamers that are, you know, hey, I'm two and eight. I'm rebuilding. They want to send out some trades. So hey, your, your league is probably mixed with people who are still all in or couple people that might be all out until you know january you should be all in until at least the trade deadline is what you should be you should be figuring out ways and we're going to do worth a first and on the next show so make sure you like subscribe comment below all that kind of stuff five star review and we're going to kind of talk about some older guys and some younger guys that you could be acquiring with with picks for now on this show let's let's take a look at these at the rookie quarterbacks and really you know we we talked about may and nicks and the not so distant past uh so we don't need to zoom in on them as a whole and we don't need to zoom in on them all as as crazy just wanted an overview here of just that we we've come out of a of a long term relationship with so many great quarterbacks that me and big co are, and jason are probably a little older than some of the audience and you know we're, we're everybody wants to talk about how nfl's stinks this year and the yada 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 and i don't think the product stinks this year i think defenses have caught up to the offenses and we've had you know a changing of the guard at some quarterbacks that we're trying to you know navigate a little bit some of the guys that we thought we were going to be generational haven't been but i think they're still okay we've had burrow and now we've had stroud who's struggling a little in his second year yeah and we've had Allen and mahomes come in but we haven't had kind of the rest of the field really pick it up and it seems as though with these four guys, at least initially here, and, and I'm sure, again, there'll be ebbs and flows. We've, we've seen it with Jaden Daniels through this whole season. We've seen it with Caleb Williams through this whole season, right? We've seen big highs and, and, and some, some lower lows, uh, especially you know with guys like Caleb where everybody's really hyper-focused on they either love him or hate him. It seems to really go up and down uh, weekly with him. Sure, But it does seem like maybe we finally found a group of guys to kind of help bridge the gap some we don't know what this next class is going to be but um, I don't think people thought this class was going to be what it is I don't think people were as confident in May I don't think people were as confident in Knicks we haven't seen Penix yet because Kirk, you know, Kirk Cousins is in there but I, I think that these guys have a really really good chance of of helping you and your fantasy team we, we've seen May come in and make the Patriots watchable definitely right that's exciting mm-hmm. we've seen Knicks and and Sean Payton be a great marriage here um, and that's kind of what we talked about all off season, right? Is that if if Nix is going to succeed, he, he went to the the ultimate place to succeed because they were a match made in heaven. And now Sean Payton is adapting to uh, using the athleticism of his skill set to take them to different uh, places and positions. Uh, and then you have Jaden Daniels, who got Cliff Kingsbury, right? And sure. we've seen him take Kyler to to good heights, and we've seen that kind of come crashing down. Uh, and then, you know, nobody was excited about Shane Waldron. We see a switch. Shane Waldron, from all intents and purposes, good play designer. Not good at actually sequencing the plays, calling the plays, mm-hmm. doing, you know, understanding the flow and how to call a game. Just a mess of, of what are we doing right now? There's no flow. There's no anything. And you saw 
how quickly just this week with just this, and obviously it's a short weekend you're trying to keep things simple i'm sure but just to switch over to thomas brown i believe it is mm-hmm. and just the difference that made in how caleb looks and it's almost the approach that that Jaden daniels has had this whole season right whereas it's been pretty e- like what they're doing isn't complicated yeah there was a lot of simplification for sure for the bears this week and and it paid off i mean you know, obviously the Bears fans listen to Dan Patrick in the morning. Paulie's up, you know, they missed the, They got the kick blocked. Mm-hmm. But it's Caleb had nothing to do with the kick getting blocked. Right. Right. And and they battled back and they had a ridiculous couple plays on the final drive by Caleb to get him down there. A great third down and a ridiculous fourth, fourth down, down throw, you yeah. know. So, like, it was just Caleb had nothing to do with the kick getting blocked. And if, if they would have made that kick – the narrative about the Bears and Caleb, and it would have been completely different. But if you just watched a little bit to see how more, how more, much more relaxed he was, and how they got know, him going, got him in rhythm, easy stuff, easy. Like get keep DJ more close, throw him the ball, let him get let him break swift, a tackle, commit, and use Rome running, like you know, <laughs> right. How how much does it stress the defense when you have an athletic quarterback that runs just and take he off? Was, he was tearing them up, right? So I mean, obviously the Packers are good. The Packers have a sneaky good defense. And, you know, Jordan, if it wasn't for a couple of red zone turnovers, the team, the Packers could have really had a lead on them. Yeah. Uh, so it was it was a good, good first week for the Bears. Obviously, their playoff hopes are dwindling and it's that, you know, from the it's just it's they don't stink as bad as they did last week. No. And I, and I think they and, weren't they weren't really stinking most of the which season. Is part of which is your exact opening argument. And I like what you were kind of got started there where you were going with that. It's just like, you know. We, we got these young guys coming in. Caleb had all of the the fanfare in the world. Right. The one one pick going to the best team. Nobody, no other rookie quarterbacks ever been going to a team this good. Right. And then it just kind of got rattled up for three or four. And he's weeks. also not your typical guy that you know. That's that's you know your typical quarterback. That's that crazy generational talent. Right. He's he is. A little outspoken. He's a little different. He did the whole process a little different than everything. Yeah, yeah. right. And so people, nails right? And just, this just everything then, yeah, was yeah. didn't do the com. Just was like I'm doing, I'm doing this the my new way. Generation. Right. Every time I turn on Twitter, there's somebody telling you know some terrible expletive towards Caleb Williams' way because he doesn't like the way Caleb Williams goes about his business or yeah, whatever. Not a, it, and it's sad. A lot of old school guys are going to just be against Caleb until they wait until he wins them over on the field. Right. But. I think this this week was was a nice step, and we had seen it with Caleb up and down. If you had been watching, and then it was down for a few weeks, and it really started with that Washington game at the end of the game, right? Oh, going had a into- terrible game, great fourth quarter, yes. got him got Good got point. him going, and then uh, just that that everything for the Bears just went deflated, yeah. right? Going into the bye, they were hot, right? Like I, coming out of their bye, I was like, dude, the Bears are just you know because I just expected. That they're going coming right. out of the bye. I expected them to build on what they had going in, and it was and like you said that that Redskins game or the Washington game was crazy because they it they didn't even deserve to be close. Right, and then, and they, then, they, was, then they they had it fought back. Yeah, and they won the game, and right. then they gave up the hell mary, and it just so, like just literally popped the balloon. And I know this is a matchup game, and we want to talk about all these things, but it's like I I when I'm talking about these quarterbacks, I do not care who they're playing. It doesn't matter to me. I want to see how you're operating the offense, yep. how, what you're doing in certain situations. Yeah, okay, Caleb might have played some bad teams. Yeah, Jaden might have played some bad teams here and there, and you know. May has has played a mix of teams. Nick same way. Like, I and then like, well, you know, you get bonus points for this and subtracted points. And I'm like, no, but they're rookies. And what were I don't understand how anybody even was remotely close to having saying the Bears should be in the playoffs. Like, and why is that even remotely an expectation? That they was, started five and two. I'm or just something. like even before the season, they were talking about it. I'm right. like, this is crazy. Yeah, this is crazy. This is this is a franchise who's <laughs> just got terrible luck. They're they've got a bit of a curse if you're a fan of them. Sure. And it's it's crazy that you were like the expectations were set way too high. And like this is what realistic should be with a rookie quarterback. Like. CJ Stroud came in and was an anomaly last year. That's the outlier. That's mm-hmm. not the normal, right? And now he's you see him struggling. He's not CJ Stroud right now is not lighting it up. He where, looks normal. Right. He looks normal. Uh so anyway, um let's let's take a fantasy perspective here and and let's take a look at Caleb Williams dynasty value right now. And I just I wanted to kind of get a look at this. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. 
or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. Some of these trades on Dynasty Daddy are from today. Um, and that's really what I was kind of wanting to look at for the most part. You know, you're you're seeing, I still think, a decent amount of hate on Caleb. Like here, I mean, this is one quarterback, so it's it's two twos uh, there for Caleb Williams. They're not going to turn it around overnight. Right. Like the dynasty, you're not going to go from like the, the week before last, they got crushed by the Patriots. You can't get that taste out of your mouth in one week. The week before that, they got blown out by the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. You know, that was the hangover from the Hail Mary against Washington. And then coach, the offensive coordinator gets fired. And to be clear, just in case you don't know, nobody in that organization or on that team wanted Caleb Williams bench. That was a rumor started by the backup quarterback's dad. Good clarification. So just get that out of your head right now. Yeah, that that backup quarterback should be cut. Nobody on their in their right minds who's around this guy and sees what he does on the field is in any way, shape or form out on him. Right. So you we've talked about this for a long, long time, many years. The ecosystem, what's going on with a rookie quarterback, a young quarterback, the offense, and again, one week, boom, put him against the Packers, division foe, hated, heated rivalry. They haven't beaten Green Bay in forever. Mm-hmm. And then one week, completely reset the system. Offensive coordinator's gone. Thomas Brown comes in. Let's simplify everything. You catch a read. You catch... Roma Dunze is leading the team in targets. Right. Let's, let's let's shake this thing up. Let's get our best player on the field more. Let's throw him the ball more. Uh, you know, my, you know, Keenan Allen's past his prime. DJ sure. Moore, DJ Moore's a stud, but Roman Dunze, you know, like yeah. let's 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 give this guy a chance. Let's fr- free yourself to run. If you don't see it, one read, maybe two reads, go. Don't sit back there trying to read right. the whole field. Right. And he did it, it was you wonderful. Know, this can this you build off of that? Sure. But 70 like, yards rushing. Like, so as far as dynasty value, it shouldn't have gone down as quickly as it did, and it won't come back as quickly as it should. Right. It, and that's gonna be the, the kind of still there. That's gonna be the underlying theme of this show is is you need to stop reacting to every game and judging the value of that player off game to game, right? This isn't redraft, it's dynasty. We're we gotta look at back up and look at the whole thing instead of looking at it from week to week to week and being every week the value changing now let somebody else play that game now if you want to play the game in that area of saying hey you play dynasty like redraft which is silly but what you should be saying is play the market like redraft and if somebody else is playing it that way and you can capitalize on them overreacting and being ridiculous do so but you yourself should not be playing it that way Caleb was an excellent prospect. He had some good games. He had some bad games. That's to be expected. Yeah. Like if you had expectations that were too high, that's probably a you problem and and feeding into some of what was going on. But like right here, you're seeing Caleb Williams for Dak and a first, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't, that seems like Caleb Williams all day for me. Like there's no way going in. If you no way you could have traded Dak Prescott and a first for, Caleb Williams going into this draft at the one one. This is true, right? Yeah, you know this is that was two one quarterback here. That that was two quarterback, one quarterback, two two seconds. You know, one quarterback. I'm not as as crazy here, but you know, here's two quarterback. Caleb Williams, Cole Komet for for JJ McCarthy and Travis Kelsey. That's not even tight end premium. Like, what are we or what are we talking about right now? Yeah, like it's. What are you doing? Yeah. That's that's insane. Uh, Caleb, a first and a first for Drake May and a first. You, yeah, like, he, yeah, Caleb and two ones for Drake May and one one. And, and that's a 2027 first. Right. So we're we're still a little awry on the value of, of Caleb. So to me, there's still a window here where people are going to be, hey, somebody, somebody out there was hating Caleb Williams. He just had a little bit of bounce back, and now they're probably looking to get rid of him probably still for half price. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And then, and then the uh, Bears schedule coming up for your buying opportunities. They play the Vikings defense, mm-hmm. one of the hardest d- right. defenses, especially for young quarterbacks. They go against Flores and the, and the Blitz, okay? And the late in the snap shift, you know, as soon as the quarterback takes a snap, the defense is not in the same position than it was. Very tough defense play against. So they got the Vikings at Detroit, San Fran at San Fran, at Minnesota again, against Detroit again. 
So, I mean, literally, they could lose the next five games in a row, and it shouldn't shock anybody. Mm -hmm. Should they win a game or two against Minnesota and Detroit? Yeah, because that's their division, and that's what happens in right. division games. Sure. And they obviously, they can go to San Fran and win, but that could be a game where San Fran gets right and scores 40 points because it's coming. So, they could easily lose three or four, five games here. In a, you know, four out of the next five, more losses. So, you're buying opportunity – the the narrative against K oh I mean if if Caleb rattles off two or three more losses here you know and, hey he sucks he stinks yeah you know so just pay attention have just be be mindful and be proactive and ready for that buying window and understand what it is and you're not buying him if you're a win now team to plug him in and win in week sixteen against right. the Detroit Lions yeah. it's like you're not doing that right right he may help you but just not what you're looking for yeah so i mean we're 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 at a point here where i think there's still room to scoop up and go in there and get caleb williams all right let's uh let's pivot off the quarterbacks but one interesting guy and then we'll we'll we'll, we'll go through two or three guys here pretty quick and then i want to end with talking about um uh, you know maybe probably get a little ranty <laughs> let's go let's go a chan here because a chan's really interesting to me it's kind of like you're either you either got him as like a top five player or you're just dying to sell him off and get a king's ransom for him right the way that that the dolphins are playing right now and using him is you know he's the wide receiver too basically on this team he's got 40, right 46 catches already <laughs> right I, I don't know who's i don't i wouldn't be dying to sell him i mean a king's ransom is a king's ransom but jay's going to show us some dynasty trades here in a little bit i um I mean, yes, today you could have got two firsts for A-Chan. Yeah, I mean, I get it. Would you would you sell off for two firsts for A-Chan? Like, I mean, like this is a, easily a very high potential league winner if he can stay on the field. Exactly. Here's the thing. If A-Chan is in your rookie draft next year, he's going to go very, very high. Right. And you could take two first-round picks and swing and miss very, very easily. Mm -hmm. That's how the first-round ro rookie drafts go. So – you can take a chan and put a guy on your team who's on the up and up about potentially being a you know a Christian McCaffrey PPR running back league winner 46 catch i mean is there another running back in the league that's got this pace in that many catches you know i mean it, you know obviously Bijan Brees Javante Williams and Alvin Kamara have caught a lot of balls this year i think recently i don't think anybody's probably on on the the a chan pace right now i don't have those numbers in front of me but i would i would assume that you're correct there that recently i don't in the last tomorrow's like, got 55 right and and or i he's know 30 and i know Brees has, has had a decent amount of targets Bijan's had some good targets and javante's had some good targets good call Brees hall's tied with him at 46 and bijan has got 45 so yeah yeah i mean uh, outside of a 30 year old kamara who's been doing it for 10 years now yeah then you got the uh the, the other two Gibbs running backs could be there we know of course if the lions could ever be trailing in a game Gibbs could get some catches yeah. so uh, i was actually kind of shocked that it wasn't more expensive to acquire hn there's a first for hn in a two quarterback there's trey benson and a and a 26 first for hn in a it. two quarterback there's a two firsts and a third i mean that's you know that's all 25s yeah so you know here's two twos and a one a 25 a 26 and a 26 a tw two a 25 or a 26 first and then a 25 and a 26 second right uh, yeah like uh, that's if you're trying to win right now do it if you're just finding us if you're just really getting into it like it's the context is everything with these first this this is a great website to show us trades sure. some of the trades we see it's just a good guideline it's a great guideline i'm not giving away two first round picks that from bad teams where i'm gonna have the one one or the sure. one three or the one you know i don't want to give all the way the one two and the one four for a chan but i'll give you a first next year if it's a middle to late first and a couple of twos after that absolutely for a guy who can catch the ball and can last year we're 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 10 regular season games away from him having the best yards per carry in the history of the league at a minimum carry, mm -hmm. right? He he got better than Jim Brown and Jamal Charles. <laughs> then the, you know he, he averaged like seven, like the best yeah. the best anybody's ever been able to do is like five point six. And so his game breaking ability is obviously has been on display. Without Tua, the the Dolphins couldn't do anything. They right. shut down. When Tua comes back, I think I think the split is when Tua 
starts the game and mostly and finishes the game, Achan is the RB one points per game. Yeah, I think that's what I heard. Something like if not, it's very well, it's very very the, close. Now you want to throw that passing game work in there. That's what I'm saying. It's just it's crazy. I mean, obviously Tyreek's youth, not quite right. You know, and, if 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 you're if you if you take out the games where people got hurt, the running backs got hurt, and throw two in there, I think it's Joe Mixon, Saquon Barkley, and Achan. Mm-hmm. And the other two guys are, you know, 27, 28 years old. If 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 Barkley, you could go back and put him, make him 23 years old now and put him on the Eagles in that system, <laughs> he's worth everything. Right. So, A-Chan in his system, who knows what's going on. The Daniels. only thing you worry about is, you know, injury, weight, light, whatever. Sure. I, I don't, I'm I'm ready to just, I'm good. Like, just let me get him, let me throw him in there. This The system, the, if the quarterback's healthy, you're you're good to go. You're, they're good, they're figuring out that he's a weapon that they can do a bunch of different stuff with him, not just run him in different ways, but he's lethal in any which way he's you lethal. want to get the ball in his good, hands. Good way to put it. There's not that many lethal guys in the league, except for on, on his level. How much would you add to Kyron Williams to get a chan? Two and a three. Two and a three. Would you go as high as a first and Kyron to get a chan, or is that too too expensive money? I mean, that's that's expensive. Kyron's fix it and forget it he just had his touchdown streak broken you know mm-hmm. like he's stafford's been dealing they've been scoring from away from the goal line l- lately like there ain't nothing wrong with kyron yeah right i mean he's obviously not a chan but he's in a another position he's in the and he's getting a lot of usage he's been very good for two two years here he's and top three in the nfl in running back usage right uh, you know, just different style. He's completely of, the different style. It, if if A Chan could see and get through the hole like Kyron, A Chan would be the best running back in the NFL. So Brees and Gibbs still over A Chan. All day. Yeah. And uh, obviously Bijan. Yeah. But after that. Well, right, but that's what that's the, exactly my point when we started talking about catches. Mm-hmm. You talked about the best ones in Kamara, and he's old. So yeah. it's a chance right there. And so, I mean, we know that PPR that, I mean, obviously Derrick Henry is Derrick Henry. He's one of one. Like he's going to get 2,000 yards rushing this year and he's got a touchdown in every single game. <laughs> sure. He don't catch any balls. Right. But he's like an s- absolute freak. So outside of that guy, all the other running backs really need catches to be up there in the top. To really boost him up. Joe Mixon's a stud. Saquon Barkley, Barkley on the Eagles yeah. is a cheat code. You know, I missed the boat on that one. I, you know, I definitely was playing my running backs in the offseason a little safer than that. And for what it's worth, I didn't pay up for Josh Jacobs at his value. And then I didn't pay up for Saquon at his value because I thought I'd just wait and see and see which one was popping. And mm-hmm. Saquon popped so hard, you couldn't buy yeah, it. You know, can't put that back. Can't back. put that back. Yeah, it's it, I, I love I love that the running backs are getting some little bit of respect put back For on their sure. name. So let's uh, let's keep it moving here. I'm, I wanted to go to another uh, league winner. I gave this out a few weeks ago, but I wanted to re-examine it. Obviously, just had another good game. I want to talk about Jawan Jennings here for a second. Obviously, Niners are are struggling a little bit right now, but Jawan's not right. No. And a- Ayuk ain't coming back anytime soon. Well, Ricky's done for the year. Ricky's coming back from a bullet wound. Missed a lot of you know bit very end and some critical stuff. Through the first seven games, right? Yeah, even if he was back tomorrow, like nothing happened. I mean, they need more than one receiver, right. and Jennings is a, is a dog. And Debo's not doesn't look quite right. He's got a bunch of padding on there. Doesn't look explosive. Whether it's whether he's washed or he, whether it's just a, a I got hosp- pneumonia. I had <laughs> shit in my lungs. Been in the hospital know. recently for um, non football injury. But I said, you know, I, it was probably on the end of the show. We didn't spend a whole lot of time. But like, if Jawan Jennings can be right and stay out there for the 49ers, he's going to be a huge part. And yesterday was was right there, right? Had had a ton of catches, good yardage, caught a touchdown. Sure, he, I was, he was their guy. He's their go to guy right now. Yeah, I, I was here two weeks ago, and we were we went over guys you would buy if you were be rebuilding, and guys you would buy if you were a championship contender. And and one of your guys was Jawan Jennings, I believe, yeah. right? And he's done nothing but get target share. Right, like when. When you get that kind of target share on a good offense and you're catching the ball, right? He's, I mean, what was it, nine catches yesterday, mm-hmm. you know? So, yeah, I mean, he's going to be top 15, top 18 receiver for the rest of the year. Yeah, last last two weeks he had seven for 93 and this past week 10 for 91 and a touch. Mm-hmm. Obviously had that huge week and then had had a couple of okay weeks in there and then was hurt. But now we're back w- with him, and he he's he's been a little banged up as as well. But this is, 
I really wanted to examine some some trade value for him because he's a weird guy, right? Like it's it's not like a, he's not a marquee name. Nobody. East Ventura. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird guy, Ace. But a twenty twenty five two for Jawan Jennings right now. If you're a competitor, I think for me is is he's I don't and I don't think he's going. He's not going. I don't think you're putting that genie back in the bottle either. I think the way the 49ers are going to move on is potentially Debo Samuel. Obviously, they're not moving on from Ayuk, but you 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 remove potentially Debo out there and Jawan comes in and Ricky keeps doing what Ricky's doing. Worst case scenario, they bring back Debo as well and you just got to wait on Debo to get dinged up because Debo's already told you at the press conference he only plays one way. Yeah. He plays like a doll. Right. And he ain't, he ain't slowing down for nobody. So, I mean, if you're like, but it's not happening this year. That's what I was, you know, so Ayuk ain't coming back. Obviously, Kittle just missed this game. So there's, there's that much more. But you could also say, well, they didn't have to worry about Kittle. On the defense, right, right? You know, you should also say that they could shade. Um, well, Kittle was Kittle was there for the last game where he had right. seven for ninety three. Sure. So I mean, I, if as a contending team, like literally contending, I would give up a, a mid to late two next year for Jawan Jennings if I thought he could help me win a championship. Yes. If you're not necessarily a lock for the playoffs and you play for the one one, that means you play for the two one. I have one league where I've literally sent out a trade offer for Jawan Jennings last night. Yeah. And I'm not into playoffs yet. I've had some terrible luck and I have a great team and I just blew the doors off the league this year, this week. And I blew them off last week and I'm coming. I mean, I was like two and six and I'm two weeks in a row, just crush it. And I'm like, I, can I see it? Right. It can, I, but the whole league, half the league is like five and five. Yeah. You know, if it was one of those split leagues where everybody like the deep, you know, the, the playoffs were basically determined already. I wouldn't even be looking at that. Right. But I was looking at how I could get Jennings to help me. Yeah, and I, I think he's going to be a guy's all it. Like here, you have a twenty-five third for Jennings, and then Easy. right below it, you have Jennings for Tyrone Tracy. Exactly. So yeah. you know, in that case, I might hold on to Tracy and just yeah. see what we can get. I mean, Juwan's only a few years older than him; he's been in the league for a while. Uh, here's two fourths for Juwan Jennings. That doesn't even make sense, right? No, that's a that's, yeah, exactly. You know, so. here's here's a three and two fours. Uh, that doesn't even make sense, right? Mm-hmm. DeAndre Swift Jennings. A three and a four for a 26 first. Uh, 25 2, 25 2. Shakir and Jennings for a 25 first. Jennings could be sitting on your team and you could be the two and eight team. Right. You know, and, and it, so that, that's kind of what I'm t- saying. There's I'm, some options to go the other way with it. I literally, I mean, the guy that I'm trying to get Jennings from in that trade I was talking about, he is maybe not the worst team, but the second worst team. Yeah. So, like, the conversation coming up is, hey, man, he ain't helping you out at all. Right. Right. So, that's if if you're if you're rebuilding for real rebuilding this is a really good window to maximize jennings like you in like case you're not gonna put the genie back in he's really he's becoming a really good football player so he's, and he's he's and, always been that for the 49ers but now that they're throwing it to him and using him there's really there's no reason to go like he's excellent yeah. there's no yeah. reason and to he go just back. signed an extension right so he's going to be there he's there for at least next year but the gamble is if you don't if you're rebuilding and you don't obviously there's the gamble is you get rid of him and he becomes an absolute stud, which at 27 years old is hard to, you know, Adam Thielen did it, but like not many times does somebody just really come on that late. Yeah. It, they've had a lot of weapons and I understand there's a lot of extenuating service circumstances. Why we now at third and Jawan's getting his due. If you don't trade him now and you're completely rebuilding, what happens next year if they do bring Debo back and Ayuk comes mm-hmm. back and Kittle's back and CMC's back? You know, even if they don't put him back in the bottle, he might middle back out and just be a five for fifty kind of guy. Yeah. And like you got a chance right now, maybe you had to package him with something. You, Jawan Jennings, in something what gets you a first? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. You might regret that, but odds are you probably won't. If you're rebuilding, yeah. uh, you know what I mean, right? If you're con- contextualizing whatever, you know that, that then I, yeah, I think you can go either way, which is you know kind of what what's showing on here that you could go either way. And if I'm if I'm ready to win and I need to add a piece, he's going to be not terribly expensive, or or maybe he will be for some people. But there's going to be some other people in the league who's like, I just found this money, yeah, take this second and 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 let's roll. And I you know I, I think Juwan's going to be really solid down the stretch here for you so I like it all right let's uh let's wrap this show up with just again talking about how you know in this day and age everything's got to be so reactive or it's not cool and negativity is you know normally the coolest right you got to be reactive you got to be the coolest you got to be the first and and you have to be so negative and obviously you know we've 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 given a rich some love we've given guys like jsn some love 
Uh, like Roma Dunze is a good example right now of like, do not waver on Roma Dunze. Mm -hmm. Roma Dunze is going to be just fine. This is classic. Don't worry about it. You kind of knew this was going to happen. I'd say he's having a fine season for what what the situation that he got put into with some other good guys around him. Like Definitely. targets are there. When he does get the ball, he looks really good. Yep. This last game, he got 10 targets, 60-something yep. yards, six catches or something like that. Um, it, it's there. He's open. When you watch the film and the film guys are coming out here going, Bo, Roma Dunze is already cooking. He's like, not the problem. Right. He ain't the problem. So yep. just that, that's, a, that's a good way um to kind of kick that off but i just i feel like there's and again i know we've done this and i'm sorry uh but there's just there's a lot of reactionary and a lot of playing dynasty like redraft and the amount of questions that we get of just like guys like Brees hall man stop trying to trade Brees hall unless your team is just garbage and you need to trade him like stop people are trying to trade cd lamb right now you could have gotten Bijan earlier in the season mm -hmm. Brees was obtainable now these boys aren't well, that's what one of the reasons I wanted to could talk about this. I, we've we've bits we've done bits and pieces like this for weeks and weeks because it keeps coming up. We that we had to do the Brees Hall and the Bijan thing. I, mm. I, what was that week four? Too easy. Week four, I literally had to go through the schedule for the for the Falcons talking about how they got a thirty six year old quarterback with one foot. Yeah, and the and murderer's row of defenses. Obviously, the Eagles' defense didn't look too good at the beginning of the season, but they got the best, sure. they got the hottest defense in the league right now. So we had to do it with Brees Hall and Bijan at the beginning of the season. We had to do it over and over again with JSN. You had to keep going back to the well on taking up for GSN, JSN. And the most recent example was Anthony Richardson. And it's about like Anthony Richardson it's a, it's a potential. And what happened? He got 30 fantasy points last, yesterday. Like 30 fantasy points. He, been, he just got benched. Yeah. Right? So like... <laughs> It's, come on now. So and 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 underdog podcast today told me he had three rookies playing offensive line yesterday, mm -hmm. and in passes that with air yards or ten yards or more, he completed nine out of twelve. Mm -hmm. bang, 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 bang. Yeah, like come on. <laughs> Who would have thought that he could evolve and get better and learn how to throw certain balls and put some touch on some things and zing he, things in and, and throw with some accuracy and, and have the moxie to put them boys on his back. The funny part is when I was here two weeks ago, I was coming off of being heavily medicated. And when we got to the end of the set, the end of the show, we were talking about it. I like the good kind. Don't not, get yeah. It, the, uh, <laughs> Anthony Richardson stuff, I couldn't even form a sentence. Like it was eleven o'clock at night. I was yeah. completely done. And I think Casey threw it over to me about Anthony Richardson. I was like, Yeah, he's young. <laughs> he's still young. Fuck it. So I am. Like we we doubled and tripled and quadruple stamped the Anthony Anthony can't Richardson. Triple stamp a double stamp. We quadruple stamped it. And he next week he could look bad. Right. Okay. Sure. So this is how the game goes. Right. So simple. There's the 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 cool the reason that we like NFL dominates ratings. The reason there's this podcast right here about football is the theater, mm -hmm. right? It is literally the only unscripted thing that you can watch. Depends who you talk to. <laughs> That's what you're talking to. I know, you know, it can talk hey, they about can that still Super take Bowl. The, they can still take it into their own hands, though. They you can. Know. But, but so the refs in nobody the knows. wants certain teams other to win. Than, other than Goodell. You could still go out there. We don't know. Giannis went out there and got the Milwaukee Bucks a championship, and there was nothing that the NBA could do about it, even though they did not want that to happen. Drew Holiday and Giannis were like, fuck the narrative. Undeniable. And Drew Holiday. Just put the ball through the. Underrated. Dude, duh. So <laughs> one of my favorite NBA players. Anthony Richardson could look bad next week. Sure. He could look great for three weeks in a row. He, he probably will. I mean, I don't know. Who cares? But he's the 22. Point is, he's played seven games. We keep coming in <laughs> more, here. more than that. We I keep, know it's 19. We keep coming in here and this is what we do. Right. Okay. It's you really can uh, a couple weeks ago. You really can play dynasty. You just you got to play buy low, sell high. Right. You got if you don't have to do anything like that. But if you if you go around selling low mm -hmm. and buying high all the time, you're going to be in trouble. Right. There are times, and we will tell you, when you need to buy high, and there'll be times that you need to sell low, and nobody's perfect. We'll get some of that wrong. But for the most part, especially when the, the bears are in completely just a total disaster, it's going downhill on a roller coaster, you, you can't be like, oh, Caleb, remember, Caleb's the worst quarterback, rookie quarterback in the class. He's worse than JJ and JJ's right. knee don't even work. Yeah. You know, like you just can't get in. You can't get caught up into that. And if you're one of those people, it's going to, your dynasty well, teams are going to, are going to hurt. An easy way to quick, like look at that is like 
the neighbors hype for and, and it's no I'm not taking any shots on neighbors. He's clearly awesome. But we but, said that a week three and week four. But he we did was it. slaying with a ton of targets and scoring twenty something points a game. And now it's you know he's been I've been we banged literally up. Literally came on here and right. said he that's that would you cannot have, you cannot get two hundred and thirty targets in a season. Like <laughs> yeah. we had to say that in week three or week four. Like, but they're like oh well, of course Mar- Marvin it's just everybody you got to compare everybody to everybody and there's uh, because he's doing this Marvin sucks and it's like no 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 yeah that's not the way this works. Two weeks into the season, it was like, oh, now, you know, it was Justin Jefferson backseat. Yeah. Justin Jefferson, you can't be better than that. You can't be higher on the list than the neighbors. Like, that was week two. Right. I guarantee you in week 10, you're going to take Justin well, Jefferson. I mean, right the- now, for the last year and a half, Chase was after CD and after Justin Jefferson. And some people were like, is JC, why are we even putting Chase still in the top tier of wide receivers right now? Because we already knew what it was. That's why. Look at what Chase is doing right now. Crushing. Crushing. What's just, I mean, Justin Jefferson's still awesome, but he's just, it's down a little bit. It's not as, it's not. He doesn't have Joe Burrow. It, that's <laughs> right. He doesn't have Which Joe is Burrow. why you keep buying into Chase because you know what it could be, and we've seen it, and it's just, hey, for whatever reason, injuries to Burrow, injuries to Chase, just a little bit of, of downwind, swoop in and buy. This is just how this works, man. And now th- that, that's gone with Chase. And everybody who has Chase right now is just winning weeks with Chase. Yep, crushing. Right? And and so your patience paid off. But, you know, if you just go around and every time these guys, especially when they're on the younger side of things and people like JSN and Anthony Richardson and the, the people who are out there who would just tell you to re-roll that all the fucking time and their whole show is just re-roll this guy, re-roll this guy, unless he's... The top five fucking players is utter nonsense. Yeah. You just didn't do the work. Like, eventually, you're going to have to pay the fucking piper because you you went two years down the line and you blew that fucking value five times fucking over because you couldn't see the forest through the trees because you don't want to play Dynasty. Then go play Redraft. Like, and stop telling people to do that. And I love getting draft picks. And, and I'm not saying that there's any, like I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. Like it, it, in, in certain instances, it makes in certain sense instances, to re-roll, but right? Like, what do you expect to get? And then like you know, we were talking uh, pre-show about this, and like everyone just gets so mad at all these players that don't immediately live up to the hype or who haven't done it for a minute. And it's like who who are the good players that y'all actually like? And right. I was like, I'm gonna need the a top list. Scores from the last three weeks, Casey. That's right. it. It's that simple. Yeah, it's if true. you haven't done well for the last three weeks, the way that Twitter and, and the, the the way that a lot of right. people play this game, people are just out. It's like right. crazy. And this is all comes back to the original rant about how everybody's so mad, and so negative, and right. so ADHD, and they can't hold, they can't, they have no patience. This is the social media apps designed to do this to you. Right. So you're just getting caught and, up into and, what they want. They want you mad. They want you attention deficit, and and you got 30 seconds and you're out. And so it translates into the rest of everyone's world. It is very frustrating. And and I have I had Judy on the list. We didn't get to him today, but Judy's a good example. Look. If you re-rolled at some point with Judy, I'm not going to be mad at you. Judy's playing some good ball right now. Sure. So I'm not going to use that as an example in my favor here to say, like, look, I, Judy's been not great for a long stretch here. And, yeah. We've been, and, if you, and, we, yeah. and we've been waiting. Yeah. So, four, four or five years is a long wait. Right. I get it. I, like I said about Baker Mayfield. I was right on Baker Mayfield not being a dynasty <laughs> asset for five years. Bro. Right. I won. I, yeah, I won. Well, we can have that multiple one. times, yeah. Yeah. and then it came back around. Right. So but, and it, and it, and so in some early. instances, <laughs> I, I threw the party two five years too early. <laughs> so all right. So before we go, top five touchdown throwers in the NFL right now. This is great because you brought it up right at the beginning of the rant was the new, like the young quarterbacks mm-hmm. and the, like we we we're old enough to have seen all you know some Hall of Famers what right off go, into, right. The, into the sunset. Joe Burrow's first, Lamar Jackson second. Okay, two MVP kind of guys. Mayfield is third in touchdown passes, and Jared Goff is fourth. Sam Darnold is fifth. Josh Allen's not in there. Josh Allen is sixth. There's Patrick Mahomes is nowhere to be seen. Well, he stinks. So go you down the list. Sell him you know? well. <laughs> and 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 not. just the like the ebbs and the flows of this. Brock Purdy, Kyler Moore, Murley, Jay, Jalen Hurts down there at, at 13, 12, and twelve touchdown passes, and C.J. Stroud eleven. So like before the season started. Four of your best quarterbacks, Purdy, Loves missed some time. Purdy, Kyler Murray, Jalen Hurts, C.J. Stroud, all have thirteen touchdown passes or less. Right, and and they getting doubled up by Baker Mayfield and Jared Goff. Mm-hmm. Right, so the NFL's crazy. We don't really know much. All we know is we got to watch. Right, and in dynasty, you got to pick your spots, and you cannot get too excited 
Right. Up or down. Right. The fact that people just are so quick to point out that this guy and they'll, they'll throw a stat at you and say, well, because of this stat here, there's no way this guy can be good. We know what he is. This stat, he fits into this percentile of people. And it's like there's just there's just no way that anybody can evolve. The situation can change. The coordinator can change. The, the environment can get better or worse. And and but we're just ready to write the book and be like, hey, we're good. Like last year, all all you saw from all the analytical guys was that Chase Brown isn't any good Love it. because his yards over expected or whatever fucking stat it was. There's no way he could be efficiency his efficiency mm-hmm. metric or whatever it was was no good. But Chase fucking Brown is a league winner right now. Yep. Now, if Moss doesn't get hurt, maybe he's not. But he was still looking pretty good in flashes. And my point was, is if you actually watch Chase Brown play last year, Every play was, it's like, not every play, but there was a lot of plays where it was an ankle tackle, a little swipe at him where it was like, he was so close to breaking a bunch of things. And and now you're seeing the explosiveness come through, you know, usage. Obviously, he's getting a ton of, you know, catches right now. But he can catch. But he can catch. And that was my point. I liked him a lot coming out. And it was just like, so just stop showing me these stats and just saying, well, we're done. We're good. And it's like, well, and and Memphis, who big fan of Memphis, That's your buddy, my buddy, my guy, you know, we Jason put up a tweet of, of don't play dynasty like Redraft and JSN. And, you know, he was kind of saying, you know, take take JSN's best game and worst game. We kind of know what JSN is at this point. And I'm like, no, Bo, we don't know what JSN is at this point. Yeah. What we, we know is he's been playing, playing behind Tyler Lockett. It's right. Like, um, like not a Hall of Famer, but like out of the guys that's not going to get in the Hall of Fame, Tyler Lockett's good. Yeah, I, and I like I don't I know Anthony Richardson's stats are terrible, but like yeah, look, guess what? All those terrible stats that he had, where what about these stats that he just put put down this week? Yeah, like what about the, like evolution? What about I don't know why he's seeing the field better. I, all I wanted to see is is can Anthony Richardson and the, and what Anthony Richardson can do? Can we keep it moving forward and evolving a little bit? And and you saw it little bits and chunks week by week and then you would also see some bad but all anybody wants to talk tell you about is the shit that they saw bad because 80 percent of these dudes who are telling you fantasy advice they ain't watching the fucking games because if they were they'd have some better fucking fantasy advice <laughs> like they're just they're running to the box score they're running to the fantasy points and then they're running to the data and it, you're not putting any context with the data i want to know the data i want to know all these thresholds i want to know you know what the uh, percent of the percentiles is of, of, of it making whether, Hey, you hit this 500 yard receiving threshold as a rookie, then it's this. Okay. Well, that's cool. Threshold drink. You know, people are out on Xavier worthy cause he might not hit that threshold. And it's like, all right, well, what happens year two when he's fucking all like, also like mm-hmm. what happens when you traded, you thought Cedric Tillman was dead and you just traded a random third for Cedric Tillman. That was a lot. Two months uh, ago, uh, right? Two months ago, get you getting a third for Tillman. Two months instead ago, instead of just drafting him and knowing what it was, we're gonna sit here and we're gonna have some patience. I I like this guy. This is a big guy who could come in and when it's his time, could be the alpha in an offense. Mm-hmm. And what happened when it was his time? Came in and was the alpha in an offense. Mm-hmm. It was one good game and a garbage time touchdown. It wasn't one good game. It was three fucking awesome games. Uh, it was a garbage time touchdown. I don't give a fuck when it was. Shout out to the comment section. Same yeah. team as long as Elijah Moore doesn't get his bell rung. That boy can play ball too. Well, that's, you know, all, all of the Judy, Elijah Moore, Tillman, those guys have been great since they've been chucking it around the yard with James Winston. I think before the season started, maybe right before week one, I was one of my guys was, I was going to say, and I think I said it was like, I was about to be really heavy into just getting Elijah Moore on your team for the cheapest thing possible because yeah. he was absolutely free. And in the preseason, he gets another concussion. Yeah, right. And I was like, ah. Oh, well, he's a free agent this this coming next year. And, and you know, my thing was like, hey, hold Tillman and hold hold Thrash, good players. Let's see if they can get a chance when it's their turn to get a chance, right? Mm-hmm. And and really what this all boils down to is there we've just got a long growing list of people that were ready to be thrown in the trash and traded away for, for next to nothing. Uh, who turn out to be really, really good players. And that's what this league is built around, right? I think the really good guys, you kind of know who the really good guys are, and you don't have to be that smart to figure it out, right? For the most part. Like the, the, the big guys come in and they do their thing, and you kind of know it. They got to eat. You know it right away, or you you knew it kind of coming in w- what it was, right? Sometimes medium sized dogs turn into big dogs. That's right. Uh, <laughs> they eat, they eat but, big, enough. You know, I, I, I just. I, I just really, really, really want to hammer home, like stop being so volatile week to week of trading and asking ridiculous questions and then saying, yeah. Stu- if you're really saying some stupid shit in the comments about how it was a garbage time, t- I don't give a fuck what, when it was a TD for Cedric <laughs> right? Tillman. 
Like, yeah. Does if it you matter? take like, away all his good plays. Yeah. Like, I don't fucking care when he scored a touchdown. What did he? Was he invisible for those other three games where he was wide receiver one for three weeks in a row? I don't right. really understand what you're talking about here. Like, what we have is a six four dude who runs pretty fast, who can jump, and it's a, a fucking menace in the end zone. I like that's that's what I want. You know, I'll take it. You know, that's 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 kind of what I what I'm shooting for. Chuba Hubbard's a great example of of left for dead. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a million of these as we go on. And it's just JSN. I have been battling for JSN for two years now of just like keep taking the discount on JSN. It's going to happen. And it's like every time it happens, there's some reason why. Oh, well, this. Well, well, that like, but they got a rookie play caller in the NFL. They've got Tyler Lockett who needs to retire. They have DK Metcalf like. JSN's gonna <laughs> on top. He could have a hundred catches this year. Tyler Lockett, who needs to retire, you know. And, and just as far as the Anthony Richardson thing goes, like it's and a lot of this stuff all comes down and boils down to value. When when you know that's what we're what we're always talking about. You know, buying, selling. It's it's a market thing, and and always coming in and buying the dip and just being patient. And Anthony Richardson comes in, and and the people there there isn't. Where are all the people who hate Anthony Richardson today? Yeah. Where are they at? Because I haven't seen them. Because y'all were here two weeks ago. Y'all were walking around with your fucking chest out like oh, you're the whiz and nobody could beat you. Mm -hmm. That's an old joke. If cases, you know, if you're not, if you don't know about, <laughs> if you don't know about the whiz, um, watch Seinfeld. Maybe I don't know. Maybe that could help you out. Uh, but you know, those guys aren't around today. And, and I, we had a long talk in the, in the discord with, with a guy and, and his whole, he was telling me that you had to take Geno Smith over Anthony Richardson. And I'm like, Bo, the, just the value just doesn't make any sense. Like mm -hmm. nobody gives a fuck about Geno Smith. I can get Geno Smith whenever I want. Super cheap. I have an opportunity to be able to get in on Anthony Richardson who can break fantasy in a quarter. There you go. Right. And, and I'm not, that's not, not. I want. I'll take Geno Smith all day long. I want to buy Geno Smith. I have no problem Geno Smith being my two or three. I got. I build, I build all sorts of teams with shitty quarterbacks. Yeah. Like I. I don't. I don't mind it at all. I hate it. But but <laughs> the point. The point is, is like we just did a startup, and and Anthony Richardson was benched at the time of the startup, and still went before fucking Geno Smith. <laughs> that's like exactly that's my right. point. Like yeah. at the end of the day, that's what I'm talking about. Like. You know, and it's just and again, Geno Smith would be a good example of like, hey, I'm not going to beat my chest of saying, hey, I held Geno Smith for seven years and now he's yeah. good. Like, that's not what I'm talking about. Seven like you, you won. You won the battle of Geno Smith not being any good. And like, how many times was Geno Smith dead and never could be anything any good at all? He's well, like 35 years old now. A, and that's people a, are like, he's so good. You know, like Jesus. I just it, 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 it's yeah, not going to stop. We and, all and, got Geno Smith off of waivers. It's not going to stop. And, and we're going to keep hammering it. And it's I, I feel that it's too. very important for us to come out here and maybe you guys are sick of hearing about it or whatever but you know and, and we won't be ranty all the time but it just seems like it has been really out of control and brought to my attention by some people who uh, follow us and like us and are in the discord and, and I exchange messages with about how yeah. rampant it is of people actually telling you to play dynasty like redraft which is insanity to me like just it's wild that anybody would say anything remotely close to those words outside of taking advantage of somebody who is playing it like redraft that's what we're trying to do uh, and that's that's what we that's basically what we do every week we come on here look at the market and say hey this this and this and then we try to throw some actual you know whys in there uh and Tasty. some football talk of kind of what what's the what so we can wrap this show up if if anybody else has anything else to say on the way out it's wrapped up of just peace you know we're <laughs> We're, we're trying to fight the fight of, of the negativity and it's just everything's trash and stinks and it's, it's fucking exhausting being in the space of this kind of stuff, of spending this much time. and like You we, run into this in every aspect uh, of your life, sure. though. Everybody at work, you know, your friends, like, your spouse probably. Everyone's just so negative all the time, you know? I don't understand it. Like, you, like just choose to be happy and excited about... Manifest some happiness in your life. Like you know? I'm, you're, you're gonna you, confirmation bias is there no matter what you're looking for. Right, it's there. Yeah. Right. Are you looking? And for the everybody has things? some of their own. Yeah, I love it. Right. But let it be something positive and not something so negative. Like, right. You're just ready to just tell everybody like by the sleeper comments, which are absolutely absurd. <laughs> like, what? First of all, what? Stay fuck, out the comments. What kind right. of a fucking loser comments on any on of sleeper? that stuff? Like, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing with your life? Those are kids. Man. And and then furthermore, like really negative comments are mostly it's losers. Like, you know, I, <laughs> it, it is. It is. It fucking is. You ain't got nothing else going on. Like, there is no. You got nobody has like Bo. If you don't like 
uh, Stairway to Heaven, don't fucking listen to Stairway to Heaven. You don't got to go to the YouTube page Thumbs and be like, down. this song fucking sucks. Thumbs down. Blah, 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 blah. Like, but somebody just went out there and made some beautiful fucking music that a lot of people like. And just because it's not your particular taste, you're, you want to go out there and shit on it when you can't make a goddamn thing that anybody gives a single fuck about. That's why you're <laughs> upset. Like, you know, and I, I Bert, Bert Kreischer and Marcus King talked about this uh, not so long ago and was basically like, and yeah, if you know who they are and what they look like, they're not the most handsome of fellows. <laughs> but Marcus King was basically like, it's basically just, he's like, I had to step away from the negativity of all the comments of, you know, and Marcus King has one of the best voices going and is a, one of the better guitar players of the younger generation of people and really doing a lot for the blues, you know, kind of rock and roll scene, keeping it alive, keeping it around as far as I'm concerned. And I'm a big fan of that kind of music. I like all music, but like, he was like, I got to get out of the negative space. And it was basically like, you know, all these negative comments. And then like you click on him and it's he's like, it's the ugliest fucking people who are just losers. <laughs> and it was just like for, you know, and it, it's it, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to pick on people. And, and but it is like what if do you, you do? have hate in your heart. Let it out. What do you, it, listen, if you went somewhere and the service stunk or the food wasn't any good or there was a big problem then, then only 10, 15 percent. Then you go and right, and then and then then if you wanted to be like, hey, we had a problem, you know, the the food at this great restaurant, the service at this great restaurant, it kind of stunk. Which I don't even really do that. Like, yeah. I'll give you if you're you know, the maybe worst, if something I'll tip you fifteen percent. Maybe if you bought something and it's not as advertised, like it's like, hey, this didn't, this doesn't look anything like it looked in the picture. It doesn't work at all. It's trash. <laughs> yeah, you know, th there. Any anything else is just a. What are you doing with your life? Negatively commenting on shit like. You know, I, I don't. Point. I don't really understand it. Fair so, point. Not that I give a f like. Do do whatever you want to do. Whatever like, that I makes you. I don't happy. care. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's wrap this up. We got a uh, worth of first coming at you next here. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit us up on the Discord, hit us up on the Patreons, do all that stuff. Five star Five review if you have. Five star review. Make sure you do that. Not all negative. Right. Yeah. Well, whatever. I mean, I'm probably getting a one star review from that because some ugly fucking nerd <laughs> is <laughs> upset. <laughs> Got him upset in the comments. Yeah. Just go him. masturbate, man. Just like, relax. Go do something productive with your time. <laughs> Hit the gym or something. Yeah, go listen to something else if you don't like it. I don't know. Like, come on, man. I just skip songs. Like, I'm, you know, <laughs> when I'm sitting around with people and we're talking about, I'm like, yeah, fucking Bob Dylan sucks. But, like, you know, I'm not going to Bob Dylan Spotify and being <laughs> like, down. fucking Bob Dylan. One star reviews. Yeah, like, that's just my, I don't, I don't enjoy channel. it. It's, he, it's not for me. I don't like it doesn't do anything for me but obviously it does something for a lot of fucking people so who am i you know if you want to be happy just choose to be it's pretty yeah. easy you just gotta focus on the positive you'll find negative anywhere you want and that's and and, and they want you to they want you to be mad because then you'll be engaged and you'll be commenting and you'll be on their fucking platform and yeah, so they can you. sell you shit fuck that's you all they want to do and, is sell you shit and engage comment we'll Ugh. see you next time peace peace <laughs>